It started with a phone call. A hot night, summer in Sydney. That's the start of Camille Bianchi's award-winning podcast, The Nurse. And this is the story behind the call that exposed James Jeffrey Griffin, a pedophile who worked in a children's hospital ward. We all had suspicions about other children. Our complaints were never taken seriously. Launceston General Hospital nurse Will Gordon made a complaint about nurse James Jeffrey Griffin six years ago. He says Griffin had been discussing what boys like with a group of vulnerable young girls. The complaint went nowhere. Griffin took his life in 2019 after being charged with child sex offences. But Mr Gordon wanted the public to know that a pedophile had gone undetected on a children's ward for almost two decades. The hospital thought otherwise. We were essentially told to shut up, work, don't talk about it, don't even think about it. Mr Gordon reached out to the Integrity Commission, who referred it back to the Secretary of the Department. The Health Minister was sent a letter. She replied saying the case shouldn't be made public. There was one final avenue. His old housemate, a journalist called Camille. He described something that sounded too odd to be true um, and certainly something that I couldn't believe didn't have attention or coverage already. The more Ms Bianchi looked, the more she found. Eight months after that call, in October 2020, she dropped her first episode. Would I investigate the nurse? The impact was immediate. The way I saw it was, it was, it was a rally cry in Tasmania. Dozens and dozens of disclosures every day of um, people who told me that they were victim survivors themselves and of the perpetrator I named, but also others. The state government soon announced an independent investigation into Griffin. But the hospital wasn't the only institution under scrutiny. While Ms Bianchi and others were working on the podcast, local journalists were breaking stories about abuse in other government-run institutions. Finally, the truth has been heard. Then the Greens dropped another bombshell. There are hundreds of allegations made against this person, including one of rape. Three staff members at Ashley Youth Detention Centre had been stood down. Another investigation was announced. Altogether, that's three separate inquiries across three separate departments. The calls for a large-scale inquiry grew louder. Then it happened. As more allegations of historical child sexual abuse by Tasmanian government employees emerge, the Premier has answered calls for a commission of inquiry. The commission of inquiry into government responses to child sexual abuse in institutions would examine the Ashley Youth Detention Centre, schools, foster care and of course the Launceston General Hospital. Almost three years later, more than 100 people have been referred to police or child protection authorities. Its final report is eight volumes, three and a half thousand pages, and contains 75 findings and 191 recommendations for change. On one hand, it's abysmal, but on the other, it fills me with hope because that's 191 things that we can fix. But as one chapter closes, in many ways, the journey is just beginning. The thing that I am still staggered by is the tenacity and the endurance of some of these people to carry that load. They've made Tassie safer and it is now time for the institutions to do their job. Chris Tame opened a door in this state for people to speak up. We saw Tiffany Skeggs and Killian McMahon kick it open. We can't throw that away because in the end it could be your child that's the recommendations safe.